So welcome back, friends, to a beautiful and snowy Sunday Sunday on the homestead. It's not snowy here, but if you look up to the north there, you can see that we woke up to the entire mountain covered in snow. So it's fun to watch because as it gets colder and colder, the snow level drops further and further and before, before long we'll have it. So that means firewood kindling. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned or Mrs. W to wake up and not have any kindling to start a fire uh, if she gets up before me. Uh, so we're going to cut some kindling today. So let's head on out and we'll do that. And then we have an apple press party uh, this evening. As you probably know, we primarily heat with firewood. We do have electric heaters uh, in the home uh, that we'll turn on if we're out of town during the winter time, you know, keep things from freezing up, but we don't uh, hardly ever use them. We just use firewood. So uh, a lot of folks ask about these firewood piles and also how much firewood do we go through annually? So uh, keep in mind, in our place, it's an old home. It's an old log home. It's over 100 years old. It's not uh, the most efficient, but I, I've done what I can to kind of bring it up to up to code and up to spec. So, and this is us being home all the time. Mrs. W, of course, is a stay-at-home mom, and, and I work from home. So we're, the, the stove is running from usually about October or so around the clock, 24 hours a day until uh, pretty late in the spring, you know, I would say up into June. So how much firewood do we go through in that? Um, last year, we went through about four and a half cords. So each one of these piles you see right here is between two and a, and a, and a half, two and a quarter to two and a half cords. I make them a little bit taller. So I'd say pretty honestly, two and a half cords per pile. And I've got 10 of them here. So what is that? Oh, math on camera, is that 30, 25? Well, you do the math, <laughs> you do the math. It's several years of firewood, so it's nice to have that. It's close to the house. Now, down beyond the pasture, we've got the big pile, uh, which is, who knows, 50 cords, a, a lot. So we've got firewood for a long time. So that's kind of how we do it. I also keep a cord and a half or so on the front porch. Um, sometimes uh, we'll do double, triple, triple depth stack. Uh, and this is really nice when it's, you know, you get up in the morning, you don't have to traipse outside or get wet or put a coat on, you can come out here and get your firewood. I usually have this all uh, put up by, I like to have it before October, so at the end of September, and then that's when we're pretty well heavy into the firewood and we start using it. So let's go pick out some straight grain stuff here, and then we'll, uh, we'll cut a box of kindling for Miss W. This is the kindling box that I built uh, for uh, to come back and forth uh, to bring it into the house. I did a video on this, you might enjoy this. Actually, I made this uh, kind of in honor of my Nana who passed away several years ago, but she, one of the things that we had received from her uh, was a cedar chest uh, that she, I, I remember it as a child, she kept it at the foot of the bed and she would keep warm wool blankets in it uh, for the winter time. And we do the same thing. It's so, uh, there's just nothing like it. We have, Mrs. W and I, we can't share a blanket. <laughs> She's probably, probably a little embarrassed of me to tell you this, but I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a roller. I roll all night, so I pull everything off in bed. So what we finally figured out what works for us is we both, we each have our own comforter and everyone's a lot happier. So we keep these great, big, huge wool blankets um, at the foot of our bed. We each have one. And when it gets cold, there's nothing like it to put, put one on. It's amazing the 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 warming properties that wool has how you can put that thin little blanket over here when you wake up cold and it makes all the difference because i like to sleep in a cold room we both do we we kind of block the heat off we don't heat our rooms and if it's freezing or better that's fine for me i just like to have a big pile of heavy blankets on me so i made this so that cedar chest that she gave us it was all coming apart and it just it, I, it couldn't be repaired so i i saved the wood from it i carefully took it apart and i made this box um and in, in honor of her so that's why it says when it says nana on there that's what we used to call her so that's what we that's what we did so let's up pick out some straight grain and i'll show you my favorite splitting hatchet um that has probably the best handle of any uh axe i've ever done it's my favorite anyway uh and we'll uh, we'll get a box full here Folks often ask what type of uh, firewood we burn. It's usually uh, two different things. Primarily 95, 90, 90% 90 of what I burn is Douglas fir. And now that's not a, not really a softwood, not really a hardwood, it's kind of in between. It actually makes a really good firewood. I do burn a, t a little bit of ponderosa pine and that's not because I seek it out, but if we have a tree that's a windfall or something that comes down or, or, or dies on the property, of course we're gonna cut it up and burn it. I, it's not my favorite because it burns really quickly and it's flashy, it's really, really hot. The fur holds a lot better. This year we're doing something different that I've never burnt before and it is 
by by far my favorite firewood I've ever burned, and that's lodgepole pine. I have a friend that's a, a forester, and he uh, came across a uh, an at whole log truck of this super dry ponderosa pine that was standing dead from a wildland fire about an hour and a half he here, and they brought it in. And he he recognized what it was, and um, and I got it from him. We got the whole log truck load. We've, that's what we've got all split up out there, and it's the most beautiful firewood. It's heavy. It's dense and it has the most beautiful smell of anything that I've ever smelled before. Every time I open up the wood stove and that smell comes out or you go outside or at night when we're sleeping, you know, and we have the window open and you can smell that wafting a little bit. It's just, it's just delightful. It's my favorite, favorite wood. Folks ask, well, how come you don't burn or don't burn hardwoods? And you know, you or they tell me all the time, you can't burn pine, you know, it's going to mess up your chimney, all that. That's all that's nonsense. It's like, well, you know, of course I would burn oak and I would burn maple and I would burn cherry if I had it, but we don't have it. You know, we we're up here in an alpine area. We don't, they don't have that stuff. So I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Uh, like, since we don't have oak, oak or uh, maple, then maybe we should just not burn anything. You know, I mean, it works. We, we heat the whole house year round for less than five cords a year. Um, I know a lot of homes that burn eight even ten cords of hardwood uh, to stay warm up in the if you you folks that live up in the up in the northeast um, midwest and and such you know all about that so uh, we get by just fine with it I'll, i will do a video a chimney cleaning video I, it's on my list to do next week uh, we got to get up there and, and i do that every year uh, in the fall uh, so we'll get that cleaned out so we don't have any problems but if you burn dry wood whether it be pine or fir whatever it is if it's dry if it's properly seasoned then you're not going to have um, a problem. It's typically when you burn the wet stuff because it doesn't combust fully and then it coats the inside of the chimney with creosote. That's where we see these chimney fires. We run on them all the time. Um, and remind me sometime, I'll tell you how to put a chimney fire out really quick if it happens because uh, we, we deal with them at the fire department routinely. So, all right, let's get to our kindling. The wood here you see on the porch has been drying for, this will be its third season undercover. So it's very, very dry. So what I look for uh, on, on your kindling is you're looking for stuff with straight grains. What that means is, is it's really clear and straight and you don't have anything like that because when you get a knot in something, it makes it really difficult to split. Something we'll, we will try here in a minute is we'll try splitting some of that, um, some of that lodgepole pine. I've never used that for kindling before. My concern is, is it does have, it is pretty knotty stuff. Uh, it's got a lot of knots, but you know, there's good pieces like this one right here. There's a lot of radial grains in it which is really kind of strange because it's grown and it's twisted and I don't know if that's because it grew up in the high desert or where it is but let's grab a couple pieces of this lodge pole and then we'll grab some straight grain fur like maybe this guy here looks pretty good and uh, see how they split. Here we have a couple pieces of that lodge pole and then uh, we've got some look at this look at the beautiful there's nothing prettier than Douglas fir a beautiful straight grain on that. Here's that radial the radial Look at that, the way that twists and it grows on the outside. It's very peculiar. I don't know if that is something that's common with lodgepole or not. All right, here's my, here's my, my, my greatest achievement for the, for the perfect handle. I was kind of going for uh, something that felt organic and like a branch when you grabbed it. You know, that perfect, had the perfect crook in it with a big knob on the end. This was one of the first hatchet handles that I made and I absolutely love it. I did this years and years ago. I've got a video on it. I'll put a link to the video making the Nana, the Nana Box and uh, this hatchet handle at the end if you'd like to watch those. And it's a granddad's old killing hatchet. This is the one that he had and we just kind of keep it in the box. It just seems to be the perfect size. So let's see how that lodge pole splits here. It's pretty good. It's a little, little bit of a long piece, but Silence of my room I hear your voice Softly calling It 
if I could only have you near to breathe a sigh or two, I would be happy just to hold the hands I love. So this kindling, Yay! that's two weeks of I love you. So in case I forget, as that's about how long it lasts. In case I forget to say I love you, every time you, you grab it, you'll know. There's like uh, 150 I love yous in there. Am I going to do it or are you going to start the fire in the morning? Well, you know, sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> it, you know, during the day it happens. So Sweet Loaf is... Uh, is I, I have to say something funny about the kindling. What's that? Jack and I... Let's come up here. I got the wide lens. Oh, you're grabbing the microphone. Jack and I are very frugal. Like, we try to use, like, two pieces. And so when we see you, you, and you use ten pieces of kindling, Jack and I both reel in horror. You're like, oh, the <gasps> oh, <no>! extravagance. <laughs> He's using too much kindling. Well, so that, uh, that'll keep us going for a while. So is there... So we haven't, we haven't had a Sweet Loaf update, but she is doing very well. She is crawling... Um, she you, is getting into everything. We have gates everywhere now. She's she, falling over. She is quite, quite a thing. And she's very interested in my microphone right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did you have, you did you have a good nap? She was a little cold today. <coughs> Poor what thing. What did you get in there? Oh, just something off the floor. Something? No, I don't think it was. Something the cat, something the cat drug in. Need something, something. All right. This is new. She, from her nap. You can see she, she's pulling herself up in her crib. Oh, she got a bump on her head. Yep, new bump. Hi, baby. She oh. likes the electronics. All right, so we are, um, boy, time is getting away from us. We have an Apple Press party. As I said, we're going to go to all, uh, I'll take a little cell phone footage. It's at a friend's house, so I don't like to take big cameras out, but I'll, I'll get some footage of that. And uh, we're going to take the boys' dirt bikes out. There's going to be a whole bunch of kids there. So, yeah. get your insurance paid up? Yeah. All right, <laughs> might, we might, might need it. Kids and, kids and dirt bikes. Ma, more? More? She wants you. Oh, I want you too. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to finish. I've got an important announcement. We'll go outside and I'll tell you about that, uh, a way that you can become special members of the channel. And uh, I'll give you the details and then we'll, uh, then we'll head out to our Apple Press. Sounds good. All right. She's going to help you with your, oh, I'll bet with your you, microphone. You with the microphone, huh? <laughs> you don't miss a thing, do you, Loaf? All right, so YouTube just made, uh, made a new feature on the channel available called Memberships. Um, I don't know if they've rolled it out to all channels. I think eventually they may. Uh, so we're going to incorporate that, and we're going to use that and, and give you an opportunity uh, to support the channel um, and also to get additional content. So I'm going to tell you uh, what we're going to offer you and why we're doing this. So if you look down uh, right next to the subscribe button, there's going to be a small button, click Join. Join, clicking on that and joining that is going to allow you to be able to support the channel financially. It's $4.99 a month. And what do you get for that? So what we're going to do is Mrs. W and I are going to do a live question and answer broadcast where we're going to actually talk to you face to face. If you're a member of this, we're going to do this once a month. So we'll pick a time, whether it be the first week in of the month or whatever that's going to be. And as, as you guys know, we've never been able to live broadcast very well from the house because of our satellite internet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down into town and the, I think the library has a nice conference room that we can rent or use or borrow or check out, whatever that is. Uh, and we'll do that. We'll set time aside. So you can talk directly to us. You can ask us any questions you like and we can just hang out together as a group of members. Uh, the second perk you're going to get is kind of fun. So I have selected... Um, Five levels uh, where you're going to get, when you become a member, a special icon. It's a Wrangler Star icon that's going to go next to your name. So if you comment in any video or you comment in the chats, uh, that's going to be right next to your name. So the one month is black, or the new, new subscriber is black. The, the one month is, I think, red, and then there's silver and the gold for six months. And if you make it through a whole year, you get the tiny, teeny, teeny tiny 243 Loctite icon next to your name. Uh, for as long as you want to be a member. So uh, why am I doing this? And oh, what uh, additional perks? So additional perks, what we're going to do is, see, there's a lot of content and there's a lot of things that we do on the channel that we, we simply can no, no longer share on the channel uh, because of the way YouTube is, has, has, got, has kind of forbidden some content. That has for us, how that affects us primarily is uh, any sort of a video with guns or shooting now is automatically flagged and demonetized. Um, and anything that has really any serious religious content. So back in the day when we used to do the 
walk through the Bible and, and the, uh, the God in 66 series and the Bible studies. Now those things, um, I wouldn't say that they're labeled, necessarily labeled hate speech, but that kind of seems to be the direction it's going. And so what, will, what can happen with this, and I don't know for sure, we're just flushing it out, is that for the members only content, we can, we can go back and we can do those things because we're doing them all the time. Just for example, Jack and I are, are constantly uh, training and shooting and, and doing handgun training. And a lot of those things I would love to share, but I just can't on the main channel because of, well, essentially because of censorship. So if we can get away from the controls that YouTube has on us with the, the with their family or their advertiser friendly stuff and we can fund the channel a little bit more be more user or subscriber supported we're not really at the mercy of of the whoever it is that are making these decisions which are somewhat kind of arbitrary so i'm going to be sharing additional content on there when we're down there shooting i'm going to turn the camera on you're going to be able to be part, partake in that it's all going to be private videos just for uh, the membership as well as be sharing photos and and different things and you just have a lot more access uh, and you see a lot more personal stuff that i just couldn't share and i'm not willing to share on the main channel so there is that so what was the last thing so why are we doing this i think i covered that yeah it would be nice to become more independent and this is something that we've grown together and um, to get away from that advertisement model uh, and to be self-supported by those of you who follow and enjoy the channel, um, you, you, you can do that. So I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to do that. Um, you'll get your icon. You'll start off with a black one. If you stick with it, you'll you move up the ranks until you ultimately get the coveted Loctite 243 icon. I don't even have that on mine. So yeah, that's it. Um, so what else was there? Let's go take a look at the Apple Press real quick, and then um, we're running out of time. We're going to have to get loaded up, and we'll uh, pick up where we left off next video. So this is the double barrel Apple Press that I restored. I found this in my old neighbor, Henry. Uh, it was in his yard. Uh, he had a bunch of junk there, and it was uh, all rotted down to the ground. The flywheel here and all the mechanism, everything was just sitting on the ground. All of the carriage in the frame had all rotted away. So I rebuilt everything the best I could. I didn't have anything to go off of. I just kind of had to look at pic old pictures online and archive stuff. But fortunately, all the hardware was there and I was able to, to replace everything and rebuild it out of, um, I used Douglas fir instead of the maple that it originally was. But it's very old. You can see the square nuts and even the barrels were rotted out. So the barrels, I found um, the rings and I recut, these are all oak staves. Uh, redid all the oak, rebuilt the tray, and all the gear train. We restored all of that. Fortunately, the whole top barrel, the hopper, uh, was still in decent shape, and I was able to salvage it. It's the original wood, and if you look over here, you'll see that it even has the original uh, name on it, where it was built in Portland, Oregon, and the size. It was the medium size. So how it works is you put the apples in here, um, you turn the crank, and there's a, a grinder in there that pulverizes the apples and that pulver that that pulp falls down into the barrel down below and you'll notice that there's two barrels one barrel is up here and this is the pressing where you do the pressing so there's a press plate right here you can see that heavy maple press plate that fits on the socket and it presses down um, and the mash into the barrel which runs into the tray which is it's sitting in there sideways and then drains out the back uh, into your receptacle. So it's a really, it's a fun process. Uh, we get the kids involved. You can see the handle here. So you just turn the handle and crank it. Uh, and it's the, really the old school way of doing it. So it's quite a treasure to us. And it's uh, something that we do every year. Um, and it's a fun tradition to have. So that is the apple press. And I'll, I'll show you a little bit of, uh, I'll show it to you in action uh, here uh, on the next video or two or so. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys uh, on the next one. So I go, okay, what could be worse than a basement? Phone booth. So that's why we got a phone booth. Start the phone booth, right? Okay. Right, all the way in, my man. Okay. Yeah, fun time to get a shoot through here. Hit! Good hit, run the bolt, run the bolt. It's gonna be a tough one. Good hit, run the bolt, run the bolt. Good job, good hit. Run the bolt, safety on. Good shot. Yeah, good job. You've been thunderous, man.
run the floor. Gotta be blast up. Different aspect, right? That is, that's really cool. That's awesome because they're not all gimmies, right?